Good morning and thank you for having me. My name is Madison Westerfield and I'm a student at the American School of Milan. Originally I was born in St. Louis, Missouri and since then I have lived in four different countries across the globe. I'd say for a 15 year old I've seen quite a bit of this world. I've seen enough to know that it is filled with beautiful traditions and wonderful history. But I've also seen enough to know that our world is ever changing and the ways of yesterday will not solve the problems of tomorrow. I have to admit, when I was first asked to introduce this speech, I was a bit hesitant. Well, this topic may seem more relevant to me than, say, the next talk in this room, the future of retail, you might have missed one key fact. I'm not actually a millennial, but a member of Generation Z. So what could I have to add on this topic? Well, a lot, actually. While you may know a millennial or even work with one, I live with one, my older brother. There tends to be an array of negative stereotypes around the word millennial. I don't understand why. All the millennials I know are bold and innovative. Their innovation is new and exciting. They use technology and social media to the best of their advantage in order to grow and reach new people around the world. Millennials are creators, entrepreneurs, and problem solvers, solving the problems of today with relevant and new solutions. While I may have just missed the cutoff to be considered a millennial, I look up to them and believe in them to make our future bright. And you should too. I now invite you to listen to their topic. Thank you. Good morning, buongiorno. So we are here just to have an introduction uh, with uh, the millennials, uh, the protagonists. Um, as, uh, as you have heard, um, this event, this summit is 100% focused on young people. Starting last year, we decided to open every single session with a teenager. Uh, you have just heard one of them and uh, they represent what we are doing. A uh, few times ago, I was inspired by one of them that uh, was talking about doing something for the future generations. I've never heard, I've never thought in my life at that, that age about future generation. I was thinking about my generation. This is one of the reasons I think something happened with the new generations, uh, and we are talking about millennials, but I think that Gen Z, on these themes, on this imp with uh, this kind of approach, will have much more engagement. I believe that they could be, this is my hope and my dream, the generation that really want to have an impact. I, I hope, but my hope is not only a hope. We need to see it, and this is the reason why if we talk about the future, if we talk about innovation, we need to have them on the table. We need to have them in the discussion. We need to create much more inclusion, much more uh, cooperation, and uh, uh, I, I hope you can, uh, you can see in our platform also the Give Me Five is just a format uh, uh, to send a message. We ask uh, leaders to have five minutes in a face-to-face -face talk with uh, young people, with a startup, or with uh, an innovator. It's a way to say we need much more inclusion, policy makers, executives, uh, now much more than before. They need to listen if they want to be successful. So uh, I'm very curious to hear what uh, the millennials will say to us. And uh, uh, I, I think that thanks to them, we, we, we will be able to accelerate the innovation process in the food system because we need to do very, very 
urgently. Yeah. We can't wait. We all know which challenges, uh, uh, which kind of challenges we are facing. Sorry, I use it too much time, so, but uh, it's something uh, I, I, I could speak for hours about that, but uh, uh, this is not uh, uh, what we have to do because we want to listen. So I would like to, to, to hear the thoughts of my friend and uh, th Christina Gould, thank you for um, sharing with us your uh, vision and your thoughts about that. Yeah, sure. Um, thank you so much, Marco, for having me and everyone here to this incredible event. Um, I happen to agree with you very strongly that we have this incredible force for transformational change in the world that happens to be the next generation. Millennials and Gen Z, due to the way that they have grown up and you know the world that they've lived in, they are naturally hardwired with the skills and attributes that we need to solve our most pressing global challenges, such as how are we gonna feed almost 10 billion people by 2050. In my organization, Thought for Food, we work with millennial and Gen Z innovators in over 140 countries. We're currently working with about 10,000 of them, actually, to develop new ideas and startups that tackle this prevailing challenge of food security. We provide not only seed funding for really good ideas, but also an ecosystem of support. Because you can imagine when you're working with young people and bringing them into this big, complicated, very nuanced challenge, that they need to really have a support network um, that comes from industry, that comes from the entrepreneurship sector, that comes from visionary leaders, um, from, play, from sectors like design and uh, leadership. And so we bring all of these people together to create transformational change and allow those natural attributes that young people possess, which are based on things like openness, collaboration, entrepreneurial mindset, a DIY approach or do-it-yourself approach to taking on innovation. We want to foster those as things that can actually be used throughout their lives and careers, whether they decide to continue with their startups and ideas or enter into you know, sectors like government or industry. So that's what Thought for Food is all about. And it's really incredible to see the lives being changed of these young people when they enter a program like ours. Um, some of them, you know, end up going forward with their startups. To date, we, to date, we have a track rev record of around 40 startups that we've created. Um, but in addition, they hire from this, you know, pool of talent that we're bringing together. Uh, they also, you know, support each other, visit each other when they go into their respective countries. And we've really created a movement of change makers that allow these natural attributes that the next generation possess to carry forward. And so we're really excited, again, to see all that's happening. And I'd love to introduce my friend, Daniel Venard from World Resource Institute, to kind of talk about the work that you're doing uh, that's really incredible. So thank Great. you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And lovely to see you all. So I think the conversation about millennials is incredibly important when we're thinking about the transformation of the food system, not only as an aspiration and as a dream of what we want to happen, but what we're seeing now. Because as we look across the food system, we see that millennials are really disrupting and transforming it in three key ways. First of all, as consumers. We know as the World Resources Institute that there's different foods have significantly different environmental impacts and uh, consequences for our world. In particular, meat, especially beef, has a very high impact uh, on greenhouse gas, water, and land. Whereas in contrast, plant-based food is a lot better for those variables. And when you look at the consumption habits of millennials, we consistently see around the world lower consumption of red meat. So that's pork and beef in particular. So if you just take the US, for example, we know that the consumption of red meat is half that of their parents. So millennials are really transforming the food system through their consumption habits to make it more sustainable. I think the second area is as employees. So I've been at the World Resources Institute for two years. Before that, I spent 15 years in corporate sustainability in uh, various food corporations. And when I started, it was acceptable uh, in the field of sustainability to do CSR programs, to have a local community project and feel good about that. 
But actually, as more and more millennials came on board into those corporates, and as corporates want to attract them, there is a much greater desire for a sense of purpose, for a sense of meaning, and for that work to be authentic. And so as a result, I think millennials are really transforming the corporate sustainability space, moving it from something which was nice to have projects to a fundamental redesign of the largest food corporates in the world. And I think the third area that we'll hear about shortly is they're clearly transforming the food system through their entrepreneurship. At the World Resources Institute, we're really trying to drive a transformation in people's consumption towards more plant-based food, but we're also really trying to reduce food waste. And when you look at the innovation that's happening around the world driving that agenda, it consistently is done by millennials who are really creating new narratives as well as new products. So for me, it's a great dream for us to think about how can millennials transform, transform the food system. But actually, I'm excited about what's already happening now. And I think we, this is a great segue uh, from here to actually now move for you to hear from five leading millennials really driving amazing work in the food system. Uh, and we'll turn to them now, and they'll share their stories. Thank you very much. Great, thanks. Yeah. Oh, I have a question. Oh. <laughs> Do you think that uh, corporations and uh, politicians uh, have understood uh, the impact of millennials on these themes? Uh, what do you think about the, the situation, both for companies and uh, politicians? So I'll just talk to companies. Um, I think the largest corporates really have, because there's a war for talent, as I'm sure we all know. And, um, and corporations want to attract the best talent. And so unless they do this, they're just not going to get the best people. So I think in boardrooms around the world, people are actually seeing corporate sustainability as a critical tool for recruitment. Mm -hmm. So I think major corporates are, yeah. I think that people are waking up to this phenomenon. This is the largest, most diverse, socially conscious generation the world has ever seen. And so I think it's imperative for companies and governments to wake up and pay attention. One of the things that I do, I actually used to work in the agriculture industry, is really try to connect young people to the existing you know, status quo. And agriculture is actually a very entrenched industry. There's certain ways of thinking, certain ways of doing. It's, you know, also agriculture is one of the oldest, you know, farmers are some of the oldest population we see in the world. Um, but, you know, there's this mantra, it comes from Silicon Valley, but it's disrupt or be disrupted, right? And so what we're trying to do through Thought for Food is connect existing leaders to the next generation to build bridges of understanding and support so that we can understand this new mindset that is, you know, very purpose driven. Um, there's a book written called The Purpose Economy, which really talks about this transformation in the mindset of young people. And to, to find ways to connect the dots and to, to build these bridges of understanding and support so that change can happen in a way that it needs to happen. I think, like I said, if it's not happening now, it will happen because this generation is now entering into leadership positions um, and in the war for talent and things like this, it's going to be really imperative that people wake up and listen to you know, the values and what they have to say. I agree 100%. Yeah. So <laughs> I think now it's time to, to hear what uh, they say. So Absolutely. we have uh, guys from all over the world, so different uh, point of views. Let's uh, Sit back go and to listen. To listen. Awesome. Thank you very Can't much. Wait. Thanks. Grazie. Good morning. For those of you who heard my story on Monday, I apologize, you're about to hear it again. Uh, when I was a naive 13-year-old growing up in Melbourne, Australia, I launched an online conservation campaign that went global. I then embarked on a journey that took me to five continents, helping lead change on initiatives uh, ranging from climate change to biodiversity loss, animal suffering, and extreme poverty. Over this time, three things became very apparent to me. One, there was a common cause fueling every one of the issues that I had worked on. The industrial production and consumption of livestock. It is a leading cause of climate change, deforestation, marine pollution, 
food and water scarcity, infectious and foodborne illnesses, and chronic diseases. Secondly, I'd realize that simply from a resource efficiency standpoint, this system does not make sense. On average, we put in six kilograms of plant material, eight and a half thousand liters of water, and in many cases, some form of drugs, and we get out a single kilogram of meat, plus a bunch of stuff we don't want. Cholesterol and fats, on average, 14 and a half kilograms of greenhouse gases, 80 kilograms of excrement, and often harmful pathogens and potentially drug-resistant bacteria. Filtering plants and water through an animal to get meat is like refueling your car by opening the flap and throwing a bucket of fuel at it. You lose far more than you gain, risk dangerous consequences, and end up creating a big fat mess. Finally, I had learned that to achieve systemic change on most issues, a shift in behavior is often required, and that's difficult. So you must meet stakeholders where they are at by offering a better choice that's easy. In this instance, innovations like plant-based meat, meat products made from plants, and clean meat, animal meat grown from cells, are the highest impact tools we have. It means offering people the tasty, culturally relevant and convenient foods that they want without the same adverse impacts on their health and the health of the world around them. These technologies respect the complex social, cultural, and economic factors influencing consumer choice and aspiration, which is particularly relevant for populations in Asia. And considering the Asia-Pacific is home to over half of humanity, and meat consumption there is estimated to rise 80% between 2014 and 2022, Asia urgently needs protein solutions. But I'm an Australian. So where do I fit into this? Take a look at this clip. These are Daigos, shoppers who clear shelves in Australia and New Zealand of particular food products and ship them to China on behalf of their middle-class clients who willingly pay a considerable premium for these goods. Why? Because they have a deep trust in the quality and safety of food from Australia and New Zealand. Australia and New Zealand are leaders in the Asia-Pacific for quality food research, production and export with products that are highly sought after across Asia. This reputation, along with several other major factors, makes Australia and New Zealand a highly strategic base for bringing new proteins into the region. We have an opportunity to harness this influence and infrastructure to shift the food agenda in possibly the most critical food region in the world. So I established Food Frontier to work with leaders like you in embracing this opportunity. Food Frontier is an organization that connects and collaborates with stakeholders along the chain to grow the ecosystem for plant-based and clean meat in our region. We activate new research, development, and commercialization, accelerate market supply, and advocate that all stakeholders embrace these cleaner, greener options because Unless we rapidly diversify our protein supply, there will be catastrophic consequences for our planet and the people who live here. So let's drive this change together. If you're uh, an entrepreneur, an investor, an organization interested in this space, please come and chat. If you're a philanthropist open to supporting this extraordinary opportunity to transform our food system for the better, please come and chat. Uh, and finally, thank you to Season Chips for this, this wonderful event, and to Marco, uh, I don't know where he is, but I, I wish more people in positions of power gave young people the platform that he does. We would live in a much different world. Thank you so much. Okay. Hello, good morning, buongiorno everybody. How are you? Okay, I'm Giorgio. I'm the founder and CEO of Emerge. Uh, we are a, a food marketplace connecting uh, uh, food suppliers to buyers and retailers worldwide. So our vision is we would like to make good food emerge so that all of us can enjoy on our tables. But let's start to talk about millennials, okay? <laughs> so the question is, will millennials change the world? 
your parents probably will say no. They're too busy uh, posting on Instagram, OK, taking selfies. So there is no way we are going to change the world. But the real question is, do we, we really want to change this world? Because sometimes, personally, I don't understand this world. So I, don't, I can't even change it, you know? The way it's written, the language, it's very old. So my point of view is that we should really rethink and reshape and reinvent the world altogether. And so I believe it's, a, it's an amazing op opportunity that we have to start from chapter one altogether. Also because millennials, it's a generation. And generation, it's not about the age, but it's a state of mind. So altogether, we can do a lot. But we also have to be very pragmatic and realistic. There are many things that are broken today. So the environment is broken. Today, we have around 25,000 tons of microplastic in the Mediterranean. And as far as I know, there's still no solution. So we should start thinking about it. The economy, it's pretty broken, at least uh, where I live in Italy. And uh, my generation is the uh, worst generations in terms of income. So uh, there is a huge gap between the previous generations. So we're not so happy in terms of cash. And as well, the 1% of the global um, population has 99% of the wealth. So also that's a bit, you know, we, we should make the money go around if we want to have innovations and uh, many good things. And finally, the food industry is broken. Even the, the soil where we are growing our fruit, our food, it's uh, dead. So desertification is a huge problem today. And it's something that we have to think. Sometimes look, we should look the, at the sky and the stars to dream, but we should also look below the soil. So. The environment is broken, the economy is broken, the food industry is broken, my leg is broken, <laughs> and, uh, but we are still standing because we are a great generation and we can really do a lot. So our generation has something in mind to start with, that we have to save the environment. So any business we start, anything we do, we always think, how can we have a real positive impact on the planet and the environment, not just making a lot of money, all right? So that's good. That's happening every day. The economy, it's going through a path of reinvention, definitely. So uh, we are seeing new technologies like blockchain rising. So trust and transparency, it's going to be something that all of us need to grow our economy. And then food. This is the kind of, you know, field that should always be around, a field that it's always alive. Where the food, it's good, it's safe, but it's also accessible to everyone. So I would like to just end my speech with a Seneca phrase, equat omnes chinis. So whether, when we have ashes, we are all equal. And that's great, because if we all feel on the same page, on the same boat, we are really a group, and then nothing is impossible. Thank you a lot. Hello, everybody. So um, I'm here to present you a solution, a solution to a quite tough problem, global hunger. And this solution is called Share the Meal. Share the Meal is it's called like this, just because we now have the possibility to share a meal with the hungry children in the world. And this is thanks to an app. 
which is born to fight global hunger. Let's start with a very touching information. As you can see, in the world, we have 20 times as many smartphones users than, as hungry children. This should make us think a bit, um, because it means that even if one out of 20 people having smartphones in their hand would share a meal with a hungry children in the world, then we would be able to end hunger today. And also, another important information is that it actually costs only 40 cents to feed a child for one day. A hungry child who's in, on the opposite side of the world only costs 40 cents to us. And that's why Share the Meal was born. It was back in 2015, and uh, a consultant of the World Food Program had this great idea to create an app which basically allow its users, allows its users to feed a child for one day with just four steps. And these four steps are downloading the app, either on Apple Store or Google Play, opening the app, choosing where to donate, depending on the food emergencies defined by the World Food Program, and then share the meal, so simply tapping. That means that all of you today and all of the millennials around the world, especially millennials because we have smartphones every day in, on our hands, could actually end anger. And as I was saying before, there's a woeful program behind. So uh, I can guarantee you that these 40 cents then arrive when, where they should. And that's because the woeful program is the biggest agency worldwide fighting hunger. And I strongly believe that to solve a problem such as hunger, knowing that 815 million people around the world are suffering from hunger, then we need big organizations who are on the field, like the World Food Program, which is part of the United Nations. You have probably seen here around season chips uh, that logo, Zero Hunger. Well, this is the second goal that you, the United Nations defined uh, and our idea and our goal is to reach zero hunger by 2030. So have you ever knew an app or a startup which act actually hopes not to exist anymore by 2030? Well, this is my dream. I hope that Share the Meal will, will not be needed anymore in 2030. Um, so apart from donating for easy steps, as I was telling you before, through Share the Meal, we, we are really trying to build a community of people who share the same interest and the same uh, mission to fight hunger. And to do that, we also gave the possibility to our users to create teams inside the app. Uh, and this is a function which, is ca which can be used by individuals or corporates to fundraise against hunger. Then people can also take pictures of food and automatically share them on their social networks and donate a meal. And last but not least, what you're seeing in the, in the screen, in March we've launched a function which basically allows uh, monthly donors to know exactly where their donations go. And by this I mean that you can actually know if you give monthly to share the meal, which is the family receiving your donation and what they are buying with your donations. In details, extreme details, I can tell you that John bought a piece of bread with your 40 cents. One, more than one million people have downloaded the app, and they've shared more than 22 million meals in two years. This means that we receive one meal every four seconds on our app. In 2017, we won the Google Play Award uh, for the best social impact app. But what I want to tell you is that without millennials, we wouldn't exist. And that's why I want to finish this conversation with a quote by our users. This is Julie, and she says, well, Share the Meal is technology used at its highest potential, harnessing the innate power of human compassion around the world. So thanks, Julie, and thanks for all of you. To all of you, I hope you're going to join us in the fight against hunger. And here are my contents in case you have any questions. Bye. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Alvin. I'm the CEO and co-founder at Algema. Well, millennials. I just checked this morning, and I'm actually 
right in the middle of it. I'm 28, and I'm a real millennial. Um, I usually don't say much good about my generation. I often say that we are kind of lazy, pretty pretentious, and we think that we are doing everything. I don't know where I'm going with that. <laughs> um, I actually think that we are sitting on the shoulders of people who've done great stuff in tougher time and with less means while we have actually everything today. And having this everything today makes me feel that we actually do have a responsibility. A responsibility to make a change happen. And, and, and recognize that it's thanks to what we had before, that we have, that we can actually make, make it happen, not just making a company like I do, making a an incredible project like all the, all, all the people in here are doing, but everyone can do it. And I feel like my, my responsibility as a millennial is to actually educate people, try to give the right information to my generation, the generation before, and the, the generation after that. Try to understand that we have a great challenge in the food industry. We are here for, we, we, we're all here for that today, and we know that this industry is broken, and it's ex extremely important to change it. So taking actions can be in many ways. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Algama, my company, and, and how we think that we can make a change thanks to what we have seen before. First of all, Algama is a company that's actually using algae to make food products. So algae is pretty amazing. It has a lot of nutrients. It's, it's, it's rich in protein, vitamins, minerals. It's really incredible, and it's very sustainable. It's been here forever. People have been eating algae forever. Today, thanks to the technology that has been developed before me, before my company, the people working on algae before us, the people working on food, it's all on us to think another way about algae. Well, algae, you can see something very weird and not very tasty, or maybe the thing that is going to wrap your maki at the Japanese restaurant. And we see something different. We see something that can be an ingredient, just like wheat, just like soy, just like actually a lot of ingredients that we have today. So today at Algama, we're using the great potential of algae to have clean, clean processes to transform this algae into actual food products food product that we can use every day. Algama is a company that is based in Paris and New York, and we have distribution in both countries. So today, it's, I'm very excited when I see our products on shelves. We, um, we, we, we developed actually a vegan mayo that is very sustainable, that is very healthy, and we're selling the product. It's selling pretty well. So I, I'm glad to see people in the US, people in France, eating a product that I consider to be better than the or original product. But I'm also concerned about what's going on in other parts of the world. So thanks to what we're doing, we're also trying to give away and, and work with other countries in South Asia, in Africa, because we saw that algae has been there always for, uh, I've been there for a long time as well. And it's a great solution to fight malnutrition. So today we do something very simple. We use our technology to create very simple and easy products that they can consume right away. And it has to be tasty, it has to be healthy, it has to be sustainable, and I believe it has to be uh, available for everyone. Well, um, I think today everyone has to take responsibility. And not only, as I said, people in, the, in companies, and everyone can do something making better choices. Better choices regarding what you're going to eat. You can ask, actually ask at the restaurant, and, and our women in us, we really like to go to restaurants. You can ask if the food is good, wh wh where does it come from? What is the process? And today, with the blockchain and everything, we're going to be more and more aware about that. And that's a good thing to, to actually push the industry forward. One other thing, don't only trust your Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram feed with the information that you have. Try to have actual information. Try to know the truth. because. I think it's also a, very, a real pain in my generation. We have a lot of information, a lot of very wrong information, and that's really bad. I believe that we need to seek for the real truth. We can have it available. We have a crazy amount of information. Seek for the real truth 
and share it. Share the real, the actual truth about the food system, about the food we should eat, about how we can change things. Well, if you want to change things, we can, you can also start something like we do. Or you can also join my company. It will be, I will be very pleased to uh, have you all <laughs> working at Algema and changing the world. Well, I'm Alvin. I'm from Algema. Thank you very much. Hi. OK. My name is Ben. I'm uh, one of the founders of Wasteless. And I'll tell you a little bit about uh, why we do what we do and then what we do. Um, so 40% of the food that we make today ends up in the landfill. Okay, one of the main reasons for that is because of expiration dates. And it's because we, as consumers, tend to always choose the products with the longest expiration dates. Um, this is just our preference. We like to put our hand at the back and take the longest one uh, so that we have uh, the decision to consume it whenever we want. Uh, despite to that, um, the pricing for these products uh, is the same for all the expiration dates. So, uh, but when we look at other industries, we look and see dynamic pricing. So when we book for flights, when we book for hotels, when we pay for our Uber, we pay in different prices based on supply and demand. Uh, so uh, the, uh, what happens today is that our groceries um, stay in the same price and ends up as waste. So what we do in Wasteless is we try to solve this problem by using dynamic pricing based on expiration date. Okay, so this means that supermarkets can price their products based on their freshness uh, so that we as consumers can come and choose if we want to buy something that expires within a few days and pay a fraction of the price or buy something that expires within a few uh, weeks and pay the regular price. Um, so it works like that. Consumers come into the store, they look at the shelf, uh, they look at the pricing, they make a decision when they're going to consume it, and then they take it. So uh, really quickly about how we do it. Um, when we, we onboard items when they come to the store so that we track the volume and the expiration date on the shelf so that we always have uh, a continuous database of what the store has, how the sales looking, and how the new upcoming products are going to come. And then uh, when we see there is a need to accelerate the sales because we want to avoid uh, waste, then we deploy uh, dynamic pricing and we connect with electronic shelf labels that are installed uh, in the supermarket uh, on the shelf so that consumers make buying decisions. And then in the end, uh, we connect with the point of sale uh, so that we can also deduct and have a, a current inventory of all the dates um, like this. Okay, so this works. Uh, we've uh, already deployed this in stores. It works for baby boomers. It works for millennials. Anybody that comes to the stores pretty much fast understands what the mechanism is and then makes uh, the decision. Uh, not only it works, we also have pretty decent metrics. We were able to decrease waste uh, for the stores in about 32% and to increase sales for almost uh, 7%. Um, a little bit about our team. Okay, so our team is coming, we're coming from different technology backgrounds, uh, but this time we wanted to do it a little bit differently. Uh, and this is why we're part of this uh, session, millennials, how millennials are treating um, or building technologies. Okay, so we talk about uh, a triple bottom line, which means uh, if, if we in the past we used to do business to make only profits, uh, what we wanted to do in this time is um, um, understanding for us that only profit will not going to make us um, as happy to come into the office every day. Uh, and we wanted to do something that makes a little more than just profits. Uh, so with Wasteless, we're able to uh, make a, an impact on every, everyday consumers on the most basic consumables, if it's milk, uh, meat, bread. So we get better prices to consumers. Uh, we understand that in order to make a change, it needs to have a business case. It means our partners need to make profit. Businesses are made to make profits. Uh, so the way Wasteless is built is that not only we're able to decrease waste, but also to increase the profits of, our, of the supermarkets. And in the end, when we do that, we're able to make a difference on the environment, uh, which technically should be the most important thing. Um, but we're in a capitalistic uh, environment, so we try to mix all of them. And this is what we talk about in sustainability, is trying to do 
profits, people, and uh, planet, environment. Uh, so that will be all. Thank you.